So today we're going to be looking at a test to see if a vector field F is conservative. Okay, and this is going to mean more in the next couple of videos, but this is the first one. So we have a vector field here, F of uh, X, Y, and Z, which is F1 in the I direction, F2 in the J direction, and F3 in the K direction. It is conservative if and only if the vector is equal to the gradient of some function F, um, i.e. F is the gradient vector of that function F. Okay, now in the next video, we are going to be working out what the potential function is once we know that the vector field is conservative. But in this particular video, we're just going to be looking at how to test if the vector field is conservative. Okay, so to test to see if it's conservative, we calculate its curl. Right, okay, so if the curl is zero, then it's conservative, nice and simple. Okay, so now for 2D vector fields, uh, let's have a look over here. For 2D vector fields, uh, a uh, vector field uh, f of xy, which is f1, i at f2, j, the curl is defined as this, which is uh, the partial derivative f2 with respect to dx minus the partial derivative of f1 with respect to dy. If that is zero, i.e. if df2 dx equals df1 dy are the same, then we know that the uh, vector field is conservative. Now, just one quick note. Um, we've done um, videos on exact first-order differential equations, and the test for working out whether or not something was an exact first-order differential equation is identical to this. When we had the first-order differential equation m dx at n dy equals zero, we had to test whether or not dn dx equaled dm dy, which is exactly the same as this test here to see if a vector field is conservative. So there's a very big overlap between these two. Okay, but what we're more interested in now is the 3D vector field. Okay, so we've got a 3D vector field, F of X, Y, and Z, which is F1i at F2j at F3k. The curl of F is defined as del cross F, that's the cross product, and it is basically found by um, evaluating this determinant here, where the i, j, k is in the first row, the partial derivative with respect to x, y, and z in the second row, and then in the third row we have f1, f2, and f3. And what we have to do is evaluate that, and if it comes to be zero, um, then we know that the, fun uh, the vector uh, field f is conservative. Okay, um, here is the expansion of that determinant, and you will see, basically, that if this is zero, and this is zero, and this is zero, then the whole curl will be zero. So basically we have this lovely little um, um, formula here, which is very similar to this one. In fact, if we look at df for the 2D, we look at df2 dx equals df1 dy. That is one third of the 3D one. And basically the other two are the basically the permutation of one, two, and three. So you have to have all three of those being equal. And if they are, then it is conservative. Okay, so basically we'll just do one question. Um, like I say, this is a two-part video, and in the second part, we will work out what the potential function is once we've established that f is conservative. So anyway, here's the question. Um, is the vector field f of x, y, z, which is the vector sine x add y, z, cos y add x, z, x, y, conservative? Uh, if you want to do that now, I'll just let you uh, pause the video. Okay, so basically uh, what we need to do is we just need to work out uh, the uh, curl, uh, which we've already worked out. So we need to work out whether or not the curl is zero. And so basically the cross product of the del and the f is equal to i, j, k, partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to z. And of course this here is f1 and this here is f2 and this here is f3 so we put that in so that's sine x add y z cos y add x z and x y and then all we need to do is expand that okay so basically that equals i which is that and then we do this mini we're just expanding the determinant here that will be d dy of x y minus d dz of cos y add x z that's the i component minus the j component which is d dx of 
x, y, obviously you need to know how to expand a determinant, minus d dz of sine x add y, z, and that's the j component, and then the k component here is going to be uh, d dx of cos y add x, z, minus d dy of sine x add y, z. And all we've got to do now is going through each one of these. Okay, so looking at the i component, well, d dy of x, y is x, and then d dz of that is equal to minus x. So that basically is your i component. And then minus the j component, well, d dx of x, y is going to be y, and d dz of that is going to be y. And then add the k component, d dx of that is going to be uh, z, and then d dy of that is also z, and you can see clearly that that equals zero i add zero j, uh, sorry minus zero j add zero k, which is a uh, the zero vector, which equals zero. Therefore, the curl is zero, and therefore this vector field here is conservative. Yes, it is. OK, um, there is one slightly quicker way that you can do it without bother actually to, uh, to work out the curl. If we just go back to this uh, formula here, this is relatively uh, intuitive. Um, and you can actually just look at the determinant. So basically what we would have to do is we'd have to say, OK, there's three different um, combinations of, uh, of two from three. So let's first of all just look at that one and that one, which is the x and the y. That dy has to equal that dx. Again, well, that dy is equal to just z, and that dx is equal to z. Good, so that one's okay. And then let's look at f1 and f3. So that dz, which is going to just be equal to y, has got to be equal to that dx, which is going to be equal to y. Okay, good, so that equals. And then the final one we're going to do is f2 and f3. So that dy... Uh, sorry, that dz, which is going to be x, has got to be equal to that dy, which is x. So you can do it without bothering. I mean, you're basically doing the same thing, but it's just you could actually do it by inspection without bothering to evaluate the determinant. OK, so like I said, this is um, a part one of a, of a two-part um, video. The next part is, OK, we've established that the vector field is, is conservative. And if we go back here, for example, OK, we know that this field is conservative here. But what is the potential function? And that will be the question that we'll be looking at next, is how do we calculate what that function is once we know that our vector field is a... Um, is conservative, i.e. it is a gradient vector. And by the way, um, just looking at this here, we have already done how to find the potential function in exact first order differential equations. Um, so the video in the, um, in the description to this will already give you how to do it for 2D vectors. What we're going to do in the next video is how do you do it for three-dimensional vectors. Okay, well, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please uh, like the video uh, by pressing the little thumbs up button and subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.